In all eukaryotes, the peripheral endoplasmic reticulum is a continuous network of membrane tubules and cisternae that emerges from the nuclear envelope. In budding yeast, fluorescence microscopy suggests that the bulk of the ER forms a tubular network at the cell cortex, which is connected to the nuclear envelope by a handful of ER tubules traversing the cytoplasm. Gia Voltz from the University of Colorado Boulder decided to take a higher resolution look at yeast ER structure using electron tomography. We take yeast cells and we high pressure freeze them so they're frozen rapidly and so that preserves the structures in as natural state as we can. And then we splice them into 150 to 200 nanometer thick sections. And this was work done by Matt West and Nesha Zurich in my lab where for each section they would trace every membrane bound structure and then this IMOD program reconstitutes all the layers back together to redraw the continuous layers of membrane. And we defined what was ER as what was continuous with itself, so it could all be traced back together again, and regions of it, of course, were bound by ribosomes. The researchers' initial studies identified three different types of peripheral ER domains. Tubular ER, central cisternal ER, and plasma membrane-associated ER. The latter of these domains was much more complicated than Volts and colleagues had anticipated. We expected that we'd see this tubular ER network just under the plasma membrane. But as we started to reconstruct it, we quickly realized that the structure was much more complicated. It was sort of this combination of small cisternae and fenestrated cisternae interconnected by tubular ER, quite different from what we had expected. You know, in our final calculations, about 25 to 40% of the plasma membrane was covered in this sort of tubular ER, cisternal ER network. In addition to that, we saw this large cisternal ER traversing the cytoplasm facing towards the bud. And that was unexpected because all reports had suggested that only tubular ER connected the nuclear envelope to the peripheral ER and yeast. It's not surprising that this cisternae hadn't been seen before because in cross sections it looks just like a tubule. It's not until you start reconstructing it in 3D that you can tell that there is this massive cisternae. Cytoplasmic tubules also pointed toward the bud, suggesting that these domains might provide ER membranes to the growing daughter cell. As we reconstructed a progression of different cells that were budding, we lined them up according to bud size and reconstructed the shape of the ER and the location of the ER as it was being inherited into the bud, we quickly noticed that the bud neck was completely devoid of any plasma membrane-associated ER. The plasma membrane ER was just sort of stuck in the mother cell. But what we saw instead was that it was this large cytoplasmic domain of both cisternae and tubules that were entering into the bud through the middle of the bud neck. And as this tubular network goes into the middle of the bud, it spreads out and recontacts the plasma membrane in multiple directions and then reforms the plasma membrane associated with ER in the bud. ER membranes, particularly highly curved tubules, are shaped in part by two protein families called reticulins and YOP1. Volts and colleagues therefore reconstructed the ER's 3D organization in yeast lacking these proteins. We thought we might lose all tubular ER. And we were excited to discover that instead we lost almost all membrane curvature in the mother cell. So in the absence of reticulin in the OP1, you lose curvature at tubules, you lose curvature at cisternae, you even lose curvature at fenestrations on the cisternae. Instead, you had this massive, large cisternae that had absolutely no membrane curvature on it that was now tightly associated with the plasma membrane. That demonstrated to us that these reticulins in YOP1 were functioning to organize membrane curvature at all ER domains within the mother cell. However, curved ER tubules were still pulled into the growing buds of yeast lacking reticulins in YOP1. In larger buds, we were surprised again to see that they still had plenty of tubules and plenty of membrane curvature in them. So in the, the bud, the tubules were being pulled out of this massive flat cisternae that was present in the mother, presumably by a process that involved actin and myosin, but not reticulins and YOP1. And we came to the conclusion that reticulins and YOP1 are maintaining membrane curvature rather than generating it. 
The reticulans and YOP1 maintain the curvature of all the different ER domains, but why do these different domains exist? One possibility is that they have distinct functions. ER cisternae, for example, are assumed to be the predominant site of ribosome docking and protein translocation into the ER. Because we have three-dimensional models and we could visualize individual ribosomes, we could go through different domains and compare the ribosome densities. We found that the cisternal ER did have a very high level of ribosome bound to it. And the ER tubules had lower ribosome density, but they're not completely ribosome excluded. They still do have a lot of ribosomes on them. And then we also looked at the plasma membrane associated ER. On one side, it's tightly associated with the plasma membrane and completely ribosome excluded. So clearly the proteins link in those two domains together so tightly that, that ribosomes can't even get between those two membranes. And on the other side, the ribosome density almost matched the ribosome density of the cisternal ER that was found in the cytoplasm. Despite the fact that this plasma membrane associated ER is full of fenestrations, it's full of tubules, even though it has high curvature, it has almost the same ribosome density as cisternae that have almost no membrane curvature. The distribution of ribosomes was altered in yeast-lacking reticulans and YOP1. Ribosome number was increased on the cytoplasmic face of the plasma membrane-associated ER in mutant mother cells, whereas fewer ribosomes studded ER membranes in mutant buds. Reticulans and YOP1 therefore regulate ER shape and distribution, plasma membrane association and ribosome density. I think it's really interesting how the ER interacts with the plasma membrane and why this interaction is regulated by membrane curvature so much. We know very little about how this domain is regulated and what it's doing, what proteins are linking these two membranes together, and how those proteins might be regulated, for example, during different times in the cell cycle or during times when you may need more plasma membrane that's not covered by the ER. Our models also reveal pretty interesting interaction between the ER and other organelles. And I think a really interesting question is what kind of proteins link these different membrane domains together and how much are these interactions regulated by membrane curvature as well. And you can learn more about the diversity of ER domains in budding yeast and how they're regulated by reticulans and YOP1 in the paper by West et al. published in the April 18th, 2011 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.